militant group Boko Haram allegedly showing some of the nearly 300 kidnapped Nigerian schoolgirls being converted to Islam. The leader of the group says in the video that he's willing to exchange the schoolgirls for Boko Haram prisoners. This morning, military and intelligence experts from the United States are in Nigeria trying to assist, trying to help find these missing girls. All right, folks, um, that was uh, the latest, uh, one of the latest reports, uh, that CNN video showing uh, what appears to be uh, many of the kidnapped girls in the traditional uh, Islamic uh, uh, outfits um, and uh, chanting, uh, uh, you know, uh, Muslim allegiance. Uh, joining us now is uh, my friend and a uh, man who does such great work. Uh, he's the founder of the Investigative Project, uh, Stephen Emerson. Hello, Stephen. How are you, sir? Good, good. How are you? All right. First of all, um, for, for let, let's maybe jump around here a little bit. This, and I want to make clear that from the beginning, when people weren't even talking about this, I said, I made a point of this, I talked about Boko Haram, and I said, I just wish we could get our special forces in there to get these girls out. So I, I want people to know that as a foundation, and any of the, uh, the left-wing media uh, watchdogs that are out there that are going to criticize me for what I'm, what I'm going to say eventually. Um, but having said that, uh, the, the latest news today is not only that video, Stephen, where that apparently shows or reportedly shows the girls or many of them, but also now they're talking about uh, Nigeria is talking about negotiating with Boko Haram to get the girls back by releasing prisoners. Good move or bad move if that takes place? Uh, negotiations are a terrible move, and um, it only rewards them and um, emboldens them and. Uh, makes terrorism pay and we should you know this is something we should have learned many many times it seems that uh, we constantly are, are, are hitting ourselves and uh, shooting ourselves in the head by uh, encouraging other countries to negotiate with terrorists you know it's interesting uh, the media still calls them extremists Michelle Obama in the uh, president's weekly media address she did it in his stead uh, when talking about this actually called them terrorists which I, I yeah, but she didn't call them Islamic. Yet. No, and not only that, not only that, I want you to hear a little bit of what she had to say, then we'll talk about this. Go ahead, 28, please. In these girls, Barack and I see our own daughters. We see their hopes and their dreams. And we can only imagine the anguish their parents are feeling right now. Many of them may have been hesitant to send their daughters off to school, fearing that harm might come their way. But they took that risk because they believed in their daughter's promise and wanted to give them every opportunity to succeed. All right, Steve, she goes on, and I'm doing a, a segment at the end of this hour in my, in my Give Me Five where we play her clips at length. She goes on to frame this whole thing as an attempt to stifle girls' education. Uh, that's what this was about. That's what's taking place all over the world. That's what terrorists do. It's about keeping women, girls down. Now, I want you to tell the people about Boko Haram. I, I've been telling them that you just got to go back to February, and the world didn't bat an eye, and, and Michelle and Barack Obama didn't bat an eye uh, when they slit the throats of, slaughtered in cold blood, shot in the back, and then burned down the place, a boys' boarding school, killing 60 boys. Uh, they've burned churches. Uh, they've even burned and, and blew up mosques, uh, if they considered the mosques to be not radical enough. They've killed hundreds and thousands of people. They just raided a Nigerian village the other day and killed 150 people. Yet Michelle Obama would have the world believe, based on that uh, address, that Boko Haram is just about keeping girls from getting an education. You know, this is, this is the typical type of... Uh politically correct, uh, neutered language to sanitize our vernacular from any identification of these guys as Islamic terrorists. You know, when you see Hollywood say, save the girls, and they don't make reference to the fact that these are Islamic terrorists. Uh, when you see Michelle Obama say it's just about girls being enslaved. The fact of the matter is that in the Middle East, there are thousands of Christian girls that have been kidnapped by Islamic militants, forced to convert or marry at age 12, and undergo genital mutilation, as in, uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali has so eloquently exposed in her book, Infidel. The reality is the refusal to identify these terrorists as Islamic terrorists is part and parcel 
of the Islamist agenda in the United States to sanitize our vernacular to ensure that we do not refer to radical Islam at all. Yeah, well, I, you know, I got in my hand here, uh, February 25th, 59 students killed at the federal government college of Buni Yadi in Yabi State, Nigeria. All the students killed were male. 24 buildings of the school were also burned. They shot, like I said, some while they were sleeping, slit some of their throats. Uh, those who ran, they shot them in the back, and then they, then they burned some alive while they, sh while they closed everything down. And I have attack after attack after attack. Uh, another uh, school shooting, July of last year, the Yobi State school shooting. Gunman attacked a secondary school, killing at least 42 people. Most of the dead were students, a few staff members also. But And as I said, churches, mosques, and, and, and to listen to Michelle Obama. And again, I'm glad that, that, that the world's attention now is focused on this terrorist group, this Islamic terrorist group, but she's misrepresenting it. Uh, it took the, the kidnapping of girls, not the slaughtering of boys and blowing up of Christians and churches. It took this to, to bring the attention, and, and this isn't going to solve anything. Again, the, the, she's, she's not tackling the problem. If she just, uh, you know, pins this on the issue of the oppression of girls, I mean, she's making this into a ridiculous issue because that goes on all the time. The reality is this is, the, this is an opportunity for the president, and he didn't do this, and for the, for the first lady to say for the first time, radical Islam is the problem. That's it, okay? It's nothing else. It's radical Islam stupid, okay? The fact that they refuse to utter that term shows the inroads made by these radical Islamic groups masquerading as civil rights groups who the president himself has embraced, invited to the White House by CARE, MPAC, ISNA, all of these groups that had a press conference last week that said in their press conference that this has nothing to do with religion. You know what? It has everything to do with religion. These are Islamic extremists. They're not doing it in the name of Christianity. They're not doing it in the name of Hindu. They're not doing it in the name of Judaism. They're doing it in the name of Islam. It doesn't mean all Muslims are terrorists. In the same way, when the IRA conflict was in vogue, uh, rep reporters referred to Protestant militants and Christian militants. didn't mean that all Christians and Protestants were militants. It meant those who engaged in violence were in the same way that Boko Haram is. I want you to hear Bill Maher, of all people, who has been, as much as I despise him for so much uh, and can't stand him and think he's reprehensible and shouldn't be allowed to own the New York Mets the way he does uh, in this day and age, uh, he, he does tell it like it is often on, on Islamic terrorism. And let's listen to this. Watch this. So I, think the, I think the point that Bill is making is that it's not just radical sectarian groups. That's right. But that it's is not just, just an outlier. I'm, he I'm here to it's not a few bad apples. You're, that's a yeah. good translation. Thank Just you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. It's not, this is the few bad apples argument. Yeah. Right, the few bad apples argument. He went on to talk about how liberals protect radical Islamist terrorists uh, and, and all that. But I want to talk about something else uh, that, that, that really uh, fits in here. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Nicholas Kristof, I almost passed out. I almost went through the TV set. Nicholas Kristof on the New York, of the New York Times on, on Fareed Zakaria's oh. 360 uh, saying, and I'm paraphrasing, but this is the gist of it, it's not radical Islam that's the problem. It's radicals and extremists on both, uh, both sides of the spectrum in all religions. He said radical Christians are just as violent, get this, as radical Islamists are. And I'm like, what are you talking about? This is the same guy that described Samuel Arian, who is the leader of the Islamic Jihad in the United States, a group that specializes in executions and decapitations as a, uh, as, as a peaceful uh, man, who a professor who believes in peace and justice. Yeah. This is Nicholas Kristof. Uh, he should be, you know, if, if, if idiocy were a crime, this guy would be sentenced to death. All right. Well, f figuratively speaking, and it's not. So yeah, I know you're not calling for his death. You said if. No, I'm not. I know. I'm okay. Not. I want right to make that clear for the loony bins out there. Uh, now let me ask you this: um, it, 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 the New York Times, uh, I, I believe, again did a story um, where they played uh, with the facts and, and with the intent here, and, and they, they, they they talked about mo the government using Muslims as informants uh, to, to to infiltrate, if you will, or to keep an eye on. Uh, any radical Islamists who might be out there interested in killing people, and they were outraged. Talk about that. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, in fact, uh, if if you want to find, you know, Willie Sutton said, if you want to go, with, if you want to find out where the money is, you go to the banks. Okay. The fact of the matter is that that Muslims who are arrested are are is, uh, and then are used as in, or recruited. They have the option of declining. Are recruited as informants to find out if there's any violence being planned in their own communities. Is a tried and proven law enforcement technique that's used with black gangs, with the Italian mafia, with the Latin kings, with the Japanese Yakuza. It's not just Muslims. As the New York Times tried to portray this as a racist profiling uh, you know, that's driven by Islamophobia. It has nothing to do with that whatsoever. This was one of the most irresponsible articles I've seen in the New York Times perhaps in the last week, I was going to say in the last year, but every week they seem to have one. <laughs> this article yeah. was, was deliberately uh, dishonest. It left out all of the details regarding law enforcement practices when they recruit informants inside the jails. It's done all the time, and not just Muslims. And in fact, there have been 40 plots in New York since 9-11. 20 of them involved uh, plots hatched at mosques in New York. So don't tell me that recruiting Muslims in New York to rec uh, to collect intelligence on what's going on in mosques or Islamic institutions is a waste of time. It has saved hundreds of lives. Finally, uh, we we have uh, some video we're going to show later of uh, of the latest from uh, I guess this is Hamas television of uh, little girls talking about how their uncle, one of their uncles or, or, or cousins was a policeman in Jerusalem and uh, or what, what they're taught to do, what he does is uh, kill Jews. He shoots Jews. And these are little kids, little girls, and when I grow up, I'm going to shoot Jews. And, you know, I hearken back to uh, the Mickey Mouse show, uh, uh, you know, where they talked about, hey, kids, you're going to take Jerusalem with your blood? You know, all that kind of stuff. Become a martyr? And this is... You know, this goes, uh, nobody cares about this. This is allowed to go on in the Palestinian culture, and nobody cares. Kerry well, doesn't anything, care, Obama what doesn't is care. You have Martin Indyk, you know, who's been, who's been or, or John Kerry, portraying uh, Israeli and Palestinian inability to get an accord as somehow part and parcel of, the, of, of a contrived uh, uh, refusal by both sides to make the painful... Uh, compromises for peace when Israel has already released hundreds of murderers and terrorists Unfortunately, in yeah. order to induce yeah. the, the PA to stay at the uh, negotiating table. For the, for, the, for the life of me, I can't figure out why Israel would negotiate with an entity that believes in releasing terrorists and murderers as their top priority. Steve, IPT.org? I, it's uh, investigative, it's www.investigativeproject.org. Dot org. All right. You're the best. Stephen Emerson, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Oh, boy. So much to talk about, and it's so crazy. Look, I have nothing against Michelle Obama talking about these girls. I think it's great. I was the first one to say I hope special forces could find these girls and save them. I would love nothing more. I, no one would be happier except probably the parents of those girls. But this is not about keeping girls from getting an education. The same group slit the throats and killed 59 boys two months ago. And Michelle Obama said nothing. Panels next.